All right, so this lesson we're going to be learning about arrays. What are arrays? How do we use them? How do we make them work? So we all know that variables are great in storing numbers like this x here. You can store a 5 or you can store a string value of a or s or whatever. What if you want to store more than one value? Why don't you want to store five values in one variable? That's what an array is used for. It use, it's used for storing multiple values in one uh, variable. So let's start by just getting rid of our old code that we did. And um, let's start by defining an array of, say, music. Right? And now, how do you add, say, five names of music? So you start by typing array and then your circle brackets and in each of this you add say Linkin Park that's one band you add I don't know simple plan whoops <laughs> um, who else you can add Headley you can add system of a down so now this one variable music has stored four different band names that's what's known as the array so say you want to get your your third value from the array so what you do is simply echo music 2 y2 that's because the array starts counting at zero, it doesn't start at one, so Lincoln Park would be array value number zero. This would be array value number one, and this would be array value number two, which is really the third one if you're gonna look at it that way, but it's really two in array terms. So now when you go to your index page and you refresh it, it reads Headley. Another type of array is known as an associative array where you're just assigning a value on the array to an ID. So for example, Lincoln Park, let's say they have around 250 songs, right? And say Simple Plan has around 200 songs, say Headley has around 175 songs, and System of a Down has 400 songs. So say you want to get the value of Linkin Park from the array. So how are you going to do that? Basically what you're going to do is you're going to echo music. And this time in brackets, single quoted brackets, you're going to have Linkin Park. Now, when you refresh your index page, this is what you get. You get 250. So basically, got the value that you assigned to Lincoln Park. Now, the last kind of array that we're going to learn about today is known as a multi-dimensional array. That's, that's basically an array within an array. So, an array array. <laughs> so, let's start by defining an array. So, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to delete our code here, and we're going to redo our code in a different manner. So for example, let's make, instead of doing music this time, we can do uh, the Griffin family, so P uh, family guy. So let's name it family and have that equal to an array. So this is basically how you start the array. These are curly brackets. Now, now you're saying family is an array now how do you have an internal array into an array? So for example, let's say we want the Griffin family. I don't know, you spell it G-R-I-F-F-I-N, I think. Griffin family. Now let's give that an array as well. So that's how you sign the array that way. So that's the Griffin array is in the family array. So let's assign who's in there. Peter is in the array. Right? So you don't end with semicolons this time, you end with a comma. That just 
that just says like for example if you remember we did x is equal to array 1 comma 2 you know 2 comma 3 so you're just gonna the commas are just there to say the next set of arrays so the next line next value in the array so Lios Lois oh my god uh, Lois yeah and that's it and if you remember the last one doesn't have a comma so what's that baby's name Stewie comma the dog comma and then that fat guy the fat boy now this doesn't end with um uh, this one which you might call it a comma why because it's the end of the griffin array you don't end it if you remember doing this in a straight line you can do this in a straight line as well so for example you can have peter comma lois it just makes it easier to see it that way if you have it in a straight line when you and when you need and when you do not need any commas there you have it and this way now you end with oops I got some curly brackets here there need to be actual circle brackets so now you got one array how do you get to the next array all you do is comma that's it you add your next array name quagmire family let's have that in its separate array the only person I know is Glenn and that's in the array so next we'll have remember to end with a comma not a semicolon the brown family which is that black guy so let's have that in array and we have Cleveland I think uh, Loretta I think they're still together and we have the boy so that's basically one array containing a value of three layers Blah -blah. containing a value of three arrays that's pretty much it and how are you gonna end this array you're gonna end this array with uh, a semicolon right there because again if you have this in a straight line you end every line with the array with a semicolon but not the internal arrays internal arrays you don't end with a semicolon and the last one as you know does not end with a comma I do believe that I did make a mistake at the beginning of the video I told you guys that this was curly brackets but they're actually supposed to be circle brackets because it's an array not an actual function that we're using so just change those to circle brackets and now say we want to get the value of um, from the Griffin family you want to get the third value which is going to be Megan or the second value which is going to be Megan so how are you going to do that so first you're going to echo the first family so which is going to be your actual array family now in square brackets you're going to have the Griffin family so just copy that paste that there and now you want to get the second value from the Griffin family now when you refresh your index page let's see what happens you get Megan so this this way you got from one array you went into the second array and you got the value from this second internal array second value so say again you want to get quagmire you want to get value number zero so refresh you get Glenn quagmire right so it just goes on and on like that and um, it's a pretty simple way to do arrays and now you guys know how to do it and that's pretty much it for arrays. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for the next one.